Okay, everyone, welcome back for another grow. And today is something actually really special, really dear to my heart. I actually started growing this not too long ago. And the first time I tasted it and put it in my mouth, I was in shock. I couldn't believe how good this tasted. Um, I actually told my wife, I was like, wow, this is like, it tastes like lemon Pez. <laughs> it's as weird as that seems. I've been told by a few people as well that they taste it. It tastes like almost like cherries. And now we're not ta we're not talking like like a, a hint, right? We're not talking about like a green that you eat and oh, it tastes a little like a, any other green except it has a hint of lemon or a hint of no. Like I swear to you, I eat this and it tastes like I bit into a lemon or, or something along that line. It, it tastes identical to it. It's so. So good. <laughs> so I, I just want to really emphasize that because um, this is turned in instantly overnight to one of my favorite things to grow now. And I'm starting to grow a ton of it just because it is kind of a fun grow and um, a really good thing for it to go on. Um, I've seen um, is like a sorbet, um, like a lemon sorbet topped with like a sorrel, the lemon sorrel. And it just, it brings out the beauty of the sorbet along with the flavor and the taste. So. Um, yeah, just <laughs> give it a shot. I promise you, you're going to love this video. Um, it is just hold on though, because it's actually a kind of a long grow. I mean, we're talking three to four weeks for this, um, to really kind of, you know, get it to shine. Right. Um, so, you know, this is going to be a little bit of a long of a grow. It might be a little longer of a video. I'll try to, you know, skip days here and there where we're just doing the same thing over and over again. Should be no big deal. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go as seamlessly and painful, painlessly as possible, I guess you can say. So, um, you know, it, we're just going to get started here with, um, you know, our typical scale, um, our, our you know, seed spreader here. Um, nothing crazy, just regular cocoa coir um, is all I use. I love cocoa coir because there's no nutrients in it. I control what goes into my microgreens, which I feel is very important. Um, I'm not guessing what's in it. I'm not guessing what's in the soil. I'm not, I don't have worm casing in here. No, nothing. Just, just plain old cocoa coir, which is awesome. So, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. The first thing we're going to do here is zero out our scale with our glass here on it. So we can measure out our seed. Um, now sorrel. So this isn't red vine sorrel or anything like that. That's actually, Red vine sorrel is like $250 a pound. It's, it's crazy. Um, this is about a pound of sorrel. Um, this is about $40 to $50 on True Leaf Market where we get all our seed. This isn't too bad. So this is a pretty good price and you can get a ton of trays out of this. We're probably talking about over 100 trays. Um, sorrel, uh, I have on my lid here. Um, we don't put any weight on it. We do eight grams per flat and we top sew it. You don't have to put any medium on top of it, right? So eight grams, um, this is a lot of grams, right? Like I said, we can probably get about a hundred trays for you know, 40, $50 worth of seed. So um, this is an extremely profitable crop um, just because you can get so much out of the seed for sure. So, so eight grams. And the reason why we only do eight grams because the seed is so flip, flipping tiny here. Look at this. Look how tiny it is, right? So we're gonna have a ton of seed for eight grams. So go ahead and put. Now the, the package, so from True Leaf Market, it actually does say you only need about three grams per tray here. I've done three grams and I didn't find it filled out the tray enough. So I kind of inched it up a little bit at a time until I finally came to a good number that I felt worked best for us, which is right around eight grams. So that's what we use and that's what works for us. So just sprinkle it on. It's really tiny seeds, so you don't need much. There we go. Try to get as much as that tray as you can it's close to the sides. Don't forget the middle. It's kind of really hard to see just because it is so tiny, but we're trying to spread it out as much as possible here. Now, the, the one problem I find with this seed shaker is that because it kind of it, it is plastic, <laughs> it all, so the, uh, the static, I guess you can say, right? It kind of sticks to the side a little bit with some of this really tiny seed. 
So I kind of just go pop it a little bit here. And I'll take off the lid and make sure we just get the rest of that out. And it came out, it's not a big deal, right? It came out no problem. So, okay. So now we take our water, we just give it a nice good mist here. There we go. Mist it down really good. We're not gonna give this any water through uh, germination or blackout, just like the rest of our crops. This should be perfectly fine. That should be plenty of misting right there. Should be plenty of good. I'm gonna give it a hair bit more. The tray seems just a tear bit light. So, just wanna make sure that we're good. I always lift up to make sure that we didn't go through the bottom. We didn't, there's no water on the bottom. So we know we're pretty good. We didn't make, we don't, we don't wanna make a swamp out of the water, right? That's not our goal here. So, ooh, it got the lid a little wet here. We don't wanna get the seed wet, that would be bad, right? So, um, now what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna take a normal tray, put it right on top, just like so. We're not gonna put any weight. However, we always put that black tray on top as well, all right? Um, and the reason why we do that in germination is because we obviously wanna keep it black. Sometimes these green trays, um, they let light through a little bit. So I just do it just to make sure. I just put that black on there, no big deal at all. Um, if you don't have like a black tray, I mean, you could probably put like a, a rag or a towel or something over this, should be no problem at all. Um, just don't cover the, the, the edges a little bit because we don't wanna like, you know, just make it so it can't breathe at all, right? Because then you'll kind of get mold and stuff like that. So um, just like this is fine. Okay, we're just gonna put it right on the shelf, just like so. Nice little black shelf, it's blackout. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna let that sit for probably around two to three days. Uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll go ahead and put it in blackout, so stay tuned. Okay, welcome back for day number four of our sorrel grow, and this has been in germination for the last three days. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, lift up here, and this is looking absolutely perfect. Now, if you'll notice here, um, a lot of people ask if this is mold. This is not mold. This is actually the definition, the very definition of, of root hairs, right? So this has kind of grown up and actually uh, pushed you know, this tray up a little bit, right? Um, now there is plenty of water in here, right? But these root hairs, because they've kind of, they're growing a little tall because they've been in the dark. Don't forget that when it's dark, microgreens like to grow tall because they're trying to find light, right? That's their goal. So, so they're growing upwards, right? So when, when the sorrel is growing upwards, um, sometimes they get a little, a little long, obviously, and those root hairs kind of stick out. So that's perfectly normal. What I like to do is normally I don't water my microgreens between germination and blackout. Um, sorrel, I like to give a little spritz just to kind of satisfy those root hairs a little bit, just because there's so many root hairs with it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. So we're just gonna give it a nice little spritz here. We're not gonna, you know, overwater it or, or anything like that. We're just trying to give those root hairs just something to suck on, you know? So just satisfy them a little bit. Um, and then we're literally just gonna take a tray Pop it right on top, like so. Right back to the shelf. And we're probably gonna let that sit for about another two days in there. Um, and we'll come right back and we'll probably just introduce it right to light, so stay tuned. Okay, we're back for day number six of our sorrel grow. Uh, this has been in blackout uh, for the last two days. Uh, normally, I've actually seen a lot of people do uh, about one day uh, for sorrel. I like to stretch it to two because it kind of grows very close to the medium um, and it just gives it a little bit more length. Um, and you'll kind of see what I mean here. So let's go ahead and take it up here. And this is, this is great. So we've stretched this quite a bit. Now the only thing you need to be careful of with sorrels is that if you stretch it too much, um, it, it really, it'll, it'll kind of die off on you because it can't support itself if you have it in too much uh, uh, air, I guess you could say, airflow, right? Um, so traditionally my microgreens, I usually don't like to like 
put a ton of airflow on them um, until the last two days. Uh, and with sorrel, that's kind of the same way, right? For the first few days, this is gonna be a very tender um, you know, crop where if you put too much airflow on this, it'll almost dry it right out. Not just the roots of the, the medium that dries out, but the actual crop dries out really quickly if you have too much airflow on this. That's from what I've noticed, that's just my experience. Um, and but once you get closer to the end of the grow and you turn on those fans, um, it, it basically can it can uh, survive, I guess, the airflow going across it. You know what I mean? So, um, but again, this is just my experience with growing sorrel. Uh, you know, everybody is you know going to have different ways of doing things for sure. Um, but I do find that sorrel will die off and dry out on me if I have too much airflow um, for the first few days for sure. So, um, but this is looking really good. Um, I'm seeing, you know, a lot of those root hairs still in there, uh, which is, uh, you know, pretty cool. They're pretty cool looking, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and give this some water for sure. I'm running low on water. I'm gonna give this a mix of, um, it's uh, the ocean nutrients that we talk about in all of our videos. Um, about one half an ounce of that goes to about a one gallon of water. Um, and I'm using that just to give these a little um, nutrients, uh, especially in the first few days, you definitely wanna do that for sure, especially with sorrel. Um, sorrel's just because it's such a tender crop. I can about to get that about a cup, cup and a quarter of water for sure. But yeah, since it's such a tender crop, I really like to baby it as much as possible for the first few days. Um, once it gets a little bit more, um, you know, volume, I guess, and, and kind of uh, gets a little bit thicker and stronger and green, um, it really, it, it thrives at that point. It thrives after that point. And uh, it becomes a lot easier to grow. You don't have to kind of babysit it and nurture it so, uh, as much, so. I'm making this seem like a lot more complicated than it is. It really isn't. It's just, you know, when you go to put it in light for the first time, just keep keep air off of it is really all I'm getting at. Um, and other than that, give it some water. We'll put it right on the shelf here. And we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. So stay tuned. And we're back for day number seven of our sorrel and is looking great. Uh, it's greened up really well over the last 24 hours. Uh, this is the point where it can, it's gonna get really slow from here. Um, it's really not gonna do much. The sorrel leaves will actually get, they'll get a lot bigger than this um, if you just give it time. This crop really takes a lot of patience. That's the hardest part is, you know, traditional microgreens, I mean, you're cutting day nine, day 10. Um, sorrel, we really need to push it. I really like to push this crop out um, to at least a minimum of three weeks um, because those leaves do get really big and vibrant. They start to turn, uh, with the sorrel, they start to turn a little pink. And so you get a really pretty vibrant greenish pink uh, canopy uh, that just has that phenomenal taste that I keep talking about, so. Um, but though, this is this is looking great, so like I said, so I'm gonna go ahead and just check the water levels on this. Um, we're getting a little dry, definitely, so let's go ahead and definitely give it some water. We're using that mineral water that we talked about. I'm gonna put about, uh, about a cup and a quarter in here, I guess. Yeah, about a cup and a quarter. We're just gonna fill that up. Um, Believe it or not, I actually find that sorrel doesn't really go through too much water. Um, sometimes I'll come in like the, cause I like to check my microgreens at nighttime um, as far as the water levels are concerned and kind of just top off if I need to. Traditionally I only water once a day. Um, I give them enough water that I, they, they can usually make it to the next day, no problem. Um, the biggest thing that I see with people's mistakes with microgreens is they overwater and they water too much. Um, you know, I like to keep my microgreens on that on the edge, you know, live dangerously a little bit of, of almost too little water. Um, but to me, they just tend to grow better that way than too much water. Um, so and that's just my experiences. So, uh, but yes, the sorrel doesn't use a ton of water. Like I said, it will actually, I'll come back the next day and I'll pick up sometimes and it'll have a little bit of water left over at the bottom of the tray. Um, so it doesn't really need that much, just kind of food for thought there. So, but let's just go ahead and introduce it right back to light. 
And from here on out, just because it is going to be a really slow grow, um, I'm probably just going to check back in every, you know, two to three days here um, and we'll go on. I, like I said, we're literally just taking it out. We're giving it a little bit of water, just making sure it's good. We're keeping it under the light. There's going to be no change. Um, you know, it's just like other, of all of our other microgreens at this point, you know. Um, there's nothing I'm going to do that's special. Um, I don't have air on it or anything like that. So, yeah, just keep on going and then we'll see in a few days and see what it looks like. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back to day number 10 of our sorrel grow. Um, this has been going for a few days now. Um, again, it's pretty long, boring grow, uh, but it's looking really good. The leaves are starting to kind of pop out and really show some color now. Um, they're kind of very full as before, kind of, you know, uh, the day after uh, we took it out of blackout. Um, these were still very lanky, you know, type of a crop. Um, but now it's just, it's looking really good. Um, I really like how it's turning out. Um, we still got a lot of the, the seed holes on here, which kind of, they do fall off by themselves uh, just because those leaves do kind of pop out and the, the seeds will fall off. So no worries about that at all. Um, but this definitely has a little bit of a ways to go. Um, what we're gonna do here is uh, just go ahead and check for water real quick. We're a little dry down here. Um, I've been watering it every day. Uh, just, just a normal amount. It actually, soil doesn't use a ton of water. Um, so you don't need to water it a ton. I won't even use this much here. Maybe about a cup, cup and a half of water is all you really need for sorrel. Probably when you go over that, a lot of times it'll happen as you'll come back and um, you'll lift up and there's still a little bit of water left and you might need to throw another cup in there. So no big deal at all. Um, but yeah, we're just going to stick it back on the shelf for a couple more days. Um, I'm just going to water it every day, just like normal, uh, just once a day. Um, again, it doesn't need a lot of water. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll put that on the shelf. All right, we'll come back in a few days. We'll see what it looks like. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, we've skipped ahead quite a bit. We're actually on day number 20 of our sorrel grow. Um, you know, I grew it out to day 10 and kind of went through and, you know, skipped a few days here and there. Um, but sorrel gets to that point after around day 10 where it's a really stagnant, slow grow. Um, and I didn't really want to bore you kind of going day to day. Um, it does look beautiful right now. Um, you could probably go probably another week if you really wanted to with this. Um, the only thing I've really seen change is it's kind of bushed out a little bit, um, but you're starting to see those really nice, beautiful, um, pinkish, reddish pigment, pigment colors all over the leaves, which is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm really happy with this grow. Um, I'm actually going to taste it really quick for you here. And oh my, it's got a really nice tangy, lemony taste. Tastes a little bit like lemon Pez, like I, I tell my wife. Um, I really enjoy it. I actually have another one I, that I've actually been growing over here. Um, I've actually cut into it. I'm, I'm kind of cutting into it every day and I've been using it for myself and my family. Um, I made some fish sandwiches last night and I sprinkled some of the sorrel on top of it and it kind of gave it like a nice lemony kick um, to the sandwich and it was just really delicious. I really loved it a lot. Um, I actually have a restaurant who's been begging to try sorrel from me. Um, and so I'm going to give this tray to him. And um, if they really enjoy it, he said that he's going to be buying sorrel from me every week, um, which means that if that's going to be a thing that I'm going to be doing, um, you know, this is a tray that I'm going to actually, you know, this takes almost a month to grow, right? Um, so I'm going to have to really prep my trays and organize my grow schedule, um, you know, to, to be able to accommodate a weekly you know, grow of sorrel for him. Um, so I'll have to, you know, start planning. It'll probably take about a month for the orders to start rolling in, right? Because we'll, we'll get that first tray going, then the second tray the week after and so forth. Um, but once you get that rolling, should be no problem. It's just that initial start for the restaurant. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is looking great. I really, really look how this turned out. Um, I still have a few little seed holes on here, but they're, they're not the ones that you can't eat. Um, so I'm really not too worried about it. You know, obviously it's not like sunflower where you don't want to eat the sunflower seeds, right? Um, so 
but yeah, you know, thanks for joining along with this grow. Um, really, you know, the, the hard part was really in the beginning. Uh, once you get past that beginning part, because um, it will dry out if you don't keep it nice and wet and moist at the very beginning, because um, it's such a really thin crop at first. Um, and then after, you know, you get into light and um, it start, you start getting those leaves to pop out, it takes off from there. You don't really need to worry about it. It takes care of itself. I've just been watering it every day, just making sure it has the proper amount of water. That's all I've been doing. I haven't been doing anything else differently. So, um, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for another grow soon and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye. Hello everyone, Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.